Good evening, Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship. I am excited and delighted to once again find myself in your TV set. Give God praise and glory for all the goodness and grace he has upon our lives. I have the final installment of the series, The Lasting Prosperity of a King tonight, and we're going to finish out this message in regards to generosity. Again, I want to remind you that God is not mad at you. He's in love with you, and he wants to bless you. But there is a way to, to accomplish that. There's a strategy. There are biblical principles that you and I have to incorporate into our lives to prove to God that we are ready for the next blessing in our lives. He wants to move you from glory to glory. So let's take a look at the message and see how we accomplish that practically as we live out God's word and apply it to our lives. I'll be back in a few moments. Acts 20, 35 said this way, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now I gotta be honest with you, when I was a 13 year old kid, I didn't really get that. <laughs> I did not get that. I got to be honest with you. I did not get this whole idea about it's, how, how is it better for me to give away my stuff than for this, me to get stuff. I'm lost on that. But what he's saying here is this, is that when you give, you prove you're ready to get more. He said it's better for you to give it away because if you get it away, it's cut, there's more coming. Here it is. You cannot be God giving and, and you, the measure that you give it away with, God always has a bigger measure to give to you. But can you trust him? Do you trust him? Do you trust him to let the grace that he gave you to give some of that grace away? Here's, my, here's a scripture, man, that's been, that's been racking me. It was killing me. It was, it was tearing me up last year. And it's following me into, into this year, Luke 6, 38. Since Christ speaking, he says, give, and it will be given to you. Give, and it will be given to you. He said, whatever you give, he said, I'll give it to you. He says, but I'm going to give a good measure. He says, I, you give it, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give a good measure. I'm going to press it down. Get, get, get it in the bag. Let's get somewhere in the bag for them. Uh, press it down. I'm going to shake it together. I'm going I'm to stuff it in there as, as much as I can stuff in there. I'm going to squeeze in there as much as I can. I'm going to fill it to the brim. And I, it says, it's going to be shaking together. It's going to be running over. It's good. So in other words, it's going to be pouring all out the bag. When, when, when he's bringing it to you, this, this stuff is going to be flying all over everywhere, everywhere, because he can't put it all in the bag. He says, it's going to be running over. He says, you're not even going to have to go find it. It's going to find you. I'm going to pour it into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, I'm going to drop something in your spirit that Probably everybody's not going to be able to receive. But if you're having financial issues, if you're having financial challenges, start giving some money away. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Let me qualify it. Find some good soil. Mm. I ain't saying just give it away to anybody. Find some good soil. Find, find, find somebody that you know is doing their best to follow God, but you can look at them and you can see that they're, they're underprivileged, that, that, they, they, that you, you're doing better than they are. Mm, mm. Sow a seed into their life. Oh, God, I thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Find a ministry. Find a ministry that, that you know is honoring God. And if, if, if it's your church, uh, don't, 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 try to take, don't try to take the tithe and call it a, a, the seed. Don't, don't try to take an offering and, 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 slide and cut that in half. No, no, no. Over and above what you're doing now, plant a seed and watch God. Oh, Jesus, watch God do something in the name of Jesus Christ. Find, find, a, find a ministry, find a person, find something that's good seed. It's honoring God. It's doing what God wants you wants, wants, wants it to do. It, it, it's blessing people. People are coming to know the Lord. Somebody who's who fighting to do the will and the word of God in their life and plant a seed in it and watch God take that thing and turn it. You want your finances to get right? Start giving money. I can't tell you, sister. I can't tell you, brother. I can't tell you I, that I know it for myself. That the moment you, the, the more you give, the more he'll give to you. Uh, I'm trying to tell somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. He'll send money to you out of the blue. I, I'm trying to tell you. 
I'm trying to tell you. When God come and tell you, hey, write, write the check. Don't hesitate. Because here it is. This is, what God, this is what God told me last year. God told me last year. Some of y'all know about this. Some of you don't know about this. But God told me last year, I was arguing with God. God came to me and told me, give, give some people some money. And I said, Lord, that's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of money. He said, I know. Give, 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 him, give, him, give him some money. And so he, I said, okay, all right, I'm going to give him some money. The devil came, devil came right behind me and said, hey, you ain't got to give him. You, know, you, know, you have to give him all that money. Just cut it in half. Cut it in half. You're still doing what God told you to do. And, and, it, and, no, and, and no one will be the wiser. And that night God came to me in a dream. In, 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 a dream, in, in a dream, I was in jail. I was in jail for IRS tax evasion. And then, I mean, I was in jail, y'all. I'm talking about, I'm deep down in the jail house. Man, I, my eyes popped up the next day, and I said, Lord, I said, I hear you, Father. I, I'm going to do what you told me to do. He said, no. He said, wait a minute. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. He said, wait a minute. He said, go, he, said, go, he said, go do your daily devotions. And when I go do my daily devotions, where does he take me? He takes me to Luke 638. I wrote a check that morning. I was on my way to church. I wrote the checks that morning. I dropped the, I dropped the checks in the mail. That day, that night, I got home and got a message out of the blue that God had given me a return on that investment of over 117-fold. I'm, I'm going to tell you like God told me. You, you're worried about pennies. I'm trying to give you thousands. I'm, try, I'm trying to blow your stuff up is what I'm trying to do. Because I, I, do, I do want to reveal myself through you in the earth. I really do. I love you. I love you, man. I, I want to bless you publicly. Oh, I want to bless you publicly. I want to put the stuff on you so strong that when, it, when, when you show up, everybody go, what? The, what the, no. Is, this, is, they selling, is they selling drugs over there? I mean, what's going on? They got to be selling crack over there. What, what in the world's going on? Jesus. <laughs> God wants to bless you so big. Wait, but you got, but you got, but you got to trust Him. Don't you have to trust Him? Yes, yes, yes. So He wants, He wants you to, uh, He wants me and you to be generous in our money. He wants also to be generous in our time. He, wa he wants us. I, 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 I'm sorry if it, if it steps on your toes. I'm sorry. I don't mean to step on your toes. But my job here today is, is not to not step on your toes. My job here today is to give you what God told me to give you. Okay. I'm serving this with love and humility, and I understand that not everybody wants the fullness of the blessings of God in their life. But, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I declare and I decree, Father, in this house, Father, with those who come into this, these doors that are connected to this ministry, Lord God, you want to allow them to, 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 to linger in spiritual mediocrity, Lord God. You want to bless them. You want to bless them big, Father. And I, 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 claim, I, I claim the blessing on their life to, for them to move out of where they are to where it is that you want them to be, Father. I pray, Father, that they will have a spirit, Lord God, that's hungry, Father, for your word and hungry for, for correction, for hungry for wisdom, for hungry for knowledge, Lord, that you, Father, might show yourself through them, Lord God, that they might have the fullness of your joy, Lord God, that they might be who you called them to be. Now, now, now he, wants your, he wants my time. And my time is, is I got to read the word. My time is I got to pray. My time is, I'm, I'm sorry, but my time is, every time the doors of the church are open up, I got to get here. I got to get, I got to be here for Sunday morning Bible study. I do, I do. I got to be here for Wednesday night Bible study. I do, I do, I do. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I want your time. I, I, want, I want you involved in the community of the church. Not, not simply to be on the periphery of the community, but involved in the community of the church. That means I got to get involved. I got to put some time, not, 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 not time like show up at 9 o'clock and leave at 1 o'clock, whatever that is, but it's like, you got to put some time in. He said, I want your time. I, I, want, I, need, I need I want your time. He said, I want your time, and I want your spirituality. Mm. Say hallelujah. I, I, I need you. I want you. If you, want, if you want to have this prosperity, this is, this, 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 this is generosity, man. Generosity is not, is not just writing a check, okay? Generosity is about you being available for God. Generosity is about, that's, that, that's generosity toward God. Generosity is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tithe, I'm going to offering. Lord, Sunday morning Bible study, I'm going to be here. Lord, Wednesday night Bible study, I'm going to be there. What, what I'm saying to God is, I'm all in. I'm all the way in, Lord God. I'm, with, I'm withhold. Oh, you, we all want to get crazy when, when McDowell sings "Withholding Nothing." That sounds great on Sunday, in the name of Jesus Christ. But are you all in on Monday? He said, "I want you to be all in." He said, "I want you 
I want your spirituality. He said, I want you to use your time for the kingdom of God. He said, I want you to tell people about me. I'm sorry, I said, tell people about me. Tell people about me on your job. Yep, yes, yes, live the life. I'm not telling you to walk around with Bible scriptures tied to your, to your cuffs. All right? I'm not telling you that, that you got to, uh, at your lunch hour, you got to be over the table by yourself, you know, reading through the scriptures. Okay, all right? I mean, hey, they, I'm calling you to do that. That's fine. But, but let your light shine. And then when given the opportunity, somebody, somebody said to me the other day, I was interviewing somebody uh, for a job. And uh, somebody asked me the question. They said, well, uh, it seems as though you've been fairly successful in your career. I said, God, by God's grace. And they said, well, tell me what, you know, what, why, why, what, what have you done? I said, the only thing I have done is I have chosen by the grace of God to live my life based on biblical principles. And if you get your priorities right and God's word puts your priorities right, then you will be successful in all that you do. The word tells me if you seek after the Lord, you'll be successful in all your ways. I said, so I'm sure there are people who are smarter than me, who work harder than me, who got more degrees than me, but they have not accomplished what I have accomplished by God's grace because I have simply put Put God first. Girl, girl, girlfriend, girlfriend said, I love the Lord. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you got to tell people about Jesus. Not only do you have to tell people about Jesus, but you got to disciple somebody. Uh oh. You, you got to pull somebody off and pour into somebody. It can, be, it can be grandson, it can be nephew, niece, it can be somebody on your job, but you got to find somebody and you got to disciple them and you got to have service at the house of God. If, you, if you're in here today, God bless you, man. I love you. I do. I'm trying, to bless, I'm trying to bless you. I really am. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to get you in a place of prosperity. I'm trying to, trying to, get, I'm trying to give you the formula, okay? Trying to get you to give you the form. If, you, if, you, if, it's, if it's out of whack, if it's, if it's out of order in your life, I'm trying to give you the formula about how to get it right in the name of Jesus Christ, how to let God step in because you can't do it. Whatever's wrong that, that you want to get right, you can't make it right. If God don't make it right, it's not going to get right. And so you got to, in the name of Jesus Christ, do it his way. Mm-hmm. So he, he says, I, I, want, I, want you to, I want you to serve. You, got, you have to serve. You have to serve at the church. So if you're in, if you're in this house right now and you're not serving in, at the church, you got, you, got some, you got some change to make in 2016. You got, you got to do something. You got to uh, usher, man. Come, come over and say, hey, I, I, I want to I pick up some trash, you know, after church, whatever. I mean, we, I, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. It's some small, hey, I want to come over on, on Tuesdays and third, uh, Tuesdays and, and Fridays and, and answer the phone for Sister Della. I, it doesn't matter what it is, but you got to find a place to serve God. Hmm? Ephesians 6, 7, and 8 says, serve wholeheartedly. He didn't say, if you serve. He said, if you ever get around to thinking about serving, if, if I fall down and come down in your bedroom at 2 o'clock at night and write on your wall, I think you should serve. He said, serve. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. Mm. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does. Your, your service is not in vain. You're not serving me. You're not serving any, any, anybody on the on spiritual leadership team. You're not even serving, if you're, if you're under in a ministry, you're not serving that ministry leader. You're serving God. And God sees you when you serve. And when you serve, it says, there's, there's a reward. He says, he wants us to be generous in our, our, our money, our, our material possessions, our time, our spirituality. And here's the one that, that we're probably going to struggle with the most because it, it strikes at the heart of, of the devil in our lives. And that is, he wants us to be generous in patiently bearing the immature actions of others without retaliation. He wants us to be patient in bearing the immature actions of others without retaliation. Mm -mm. That's grace. Because has not God patiently bore? Let me just speak for myself. God has patiently bore my immature actions without any retaliation. 
He has given me some show enough grace in my life. I, every step of the way I have been, I, we were talking about the other day, my wife and I were talking about it, Minister, Minister Gale. I was saying, if, if it had not been for the prayers of my mother on my, on my life, I would have I would have had to have been in jail. I would have had to have gone to jail. I would have had to have been dead. Something would have had to happen to me. And so God said, I, look, look, look at that. He was raised right. He know better. And look at he acting a complete, like a complete idiot, like a complete fool. But you know what? I got better for him than that. I'm not going to retaliate on him. God's asking us to have the same grace on the lives of others. To say nothing and to do nothing to those who persecute, profane, and to treat us wrongly, even when we have the right, even when we have the right, even when we could get good counsel, it would be good counsel, and the counsel would say, hey man, you, you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't take that. You can't take that, not that. You cannot take that. You're going to have to deal with that. That would be good counsel. But the Holy Spirit calls you and I to do nothing and to say nothing, but simply to respond to them in love. Have you ever been called by Christ to allow others to trample over you? I have. I, oh, I'm in the house now. I found, I found, I found. The Holy Ghost has found the spot. Let, let, me, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about it, man. I had, I had this guy, I had this guy. Uh, he was close. He was close, man. He was close to me and, and my wife. Really, really close to me, me and my wife. And he was, a, he was actually my pastor at the time. Real, real, you know, uh, his family was close to me and my wife. His, his son and my oldest daughter, they was close. We'd have birthday parties together. We was close, man. And turned out, my pastor now, tur turned out that my pastor was secretly lusting after my wife. And the pastor sent my wife an anonymous letter in the mail saying all kinds of crazy stuff. And I took, it, I took, the, took the letter and, and took the letter to my presiding elder. I, didn't know who, I had no idea who it was. It was an anonymous letter. I took it to my presiding elder. The presiding elder said, oh, I know who, I know who this is. Because I prayed and said, Lord, show me my enemy. And you know what, man? When, I, when, it, when, it, was, when it was revealed to me, uh, all God would let me do, God, I went to him and I told him, I said, I know. I said, I know what you've done. And I said, but God wants me to tell you that I forgive you. And you know that God would not let me leave that church. I had to sit under his, under his pastorship till I reached a point where I could separate the word he was bringing from his, from, from his person. And the moment I got that, that separated, God moved him out of the church in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want, I want you to know that sometime, see, God, because I I I could have I could have who knows what I could have done I could have well, you know I could have you know could have could have got my Roscoe could have could have got my Roscoe you know what I'm saying I could have got because you know it can't, no no don't be don't be fooling over in that area right there okay I'm just saying I'm just saying I'm just saying don't be fooling with that area right there okay all right so so I could have got my Roscoe and went down there you know what I'm saying and just kind of you know say you know bro I think we got probably we got a problem doc okay all right but no no praise God for the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Let me, I'm, I, need, I need to tell you this. I need, I need to tell you the back end, I need to tell you the back end of that story. The back end of that story is that after uh, he, he was moved out and another pastor came and I was there for a little while and then God moved me out of that church. God does not call you to run from your problem. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. God will never call you to run from your problem. He'll call you to deal with your problem. And if you've dealt with it, then he'll move, either move the problem or move you. But God will never call you to dodge the devil. So after, after God moved, moved him out, I, by his grace, I responded the way I should. Uh, God moved me to another church. Listen to me. Stay with me now. Stay with me. This church that I went to, that's, 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 the, that's the church where uh, I was ordained to be a deacon. That's the church where I was called into the ministry. That church is the church I was called out of to plant this church. I'm telling you today that none of that would have ever happened if I had not obeyed God and allowed myself to keep to be trampled over, to be profaned, to be. You know, tell somebody, tell somebody that. Somebody, hey, man, say, what, uh, who, who, where you going? I'm going to this sort of church. Who's your pastor? So and so. And so. What, what was going on with him? Well, I mean, he, you know, he been hitting on my wife. He, he went by my wife. You know, a, a nasty letter in the in the mail. So, man, what, what, what you? Why are you staying there? You crazy? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I know I'm crazy. I know it don't make no sense, but he said. 
So I'm going to do what he said. And so if I don't do what he said, none of this ever even happens in the name of, of Jesus Christ. So, so, so God, God, God is calling you sometimes, not, not all the time. Not, I'm not trying to tell you every time. But sometimes God's calling you and I to patiently bear the immature actions of others. Ask, ask David about King Saul. Huh? I, I, know, I know that you've been anointed and you haven't been appointed. I, I know Saul is persecuting you. I know Saul is talking your name down. I know Saul is running you all through the wilderness. And I'm, I'm going to put him in a place where you can kill him and take over the kingship. He said, I will not touch God's anointing. I know he's trampling over me. I, I know he deserves for, for to be killed. I, all the stuff that he's done. I know God's already elevated me over him. But the Holy Spirit won't let me do it. He's trampling over me, but I'm, going, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. Huh? Come on, somebody. How about Paul's encouragement to Philemon? Hmm? I got this slave on this, this crazy rebellious slave on Onesimus that done stole money from me. Who, who knows what else? And, and went running off somewhere. By law, I should kill him is what I should do. Paul said, let him trample over you and take him back like you're taking me back. Take, when you see him, receive him like he's me. What the world's going on with Philemon? Isn't that no Nismus? Yeah, Nismus stole money. Yeah, he took a whole bunch of money when he left out of here. And he went off somewhere. Then he come back in about four or five years. He, now he come, 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 come skipping down the road. And, and, and Philemon go out there hugging him and treating him all like he's a good friend. Huh? What about Jesus Christ? Trampled over, profaned, persecuted. Lied on, beat to a place where he was beyond recognition as a human being. Never said a mumbling word. God will call you, he will call me, that we might be trampled over from time to time. Because sometimes there is a greater glory. Sometimes there is a better thing for you to do than to stand up and be strong. Yes, I'm, I'm a man. Yes, I know I'm not a punk. Yes, you, you, don't, you don't just get to do me, treat me any kind of way. Yes, there's benefits to being a child of God. Jesus Christ was not a punk in the name of Jesus Christ. He, he stood on the word of God. He stood for God. He did the things in the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ. But sometimes, house of worship, church family, there's a better thing. There's a greater glory that God can get by us doing nothing and saying nothing, but simply responding in love. Romans 15 and 1 says it this way. When we, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We then that are mature. We then that are mature in Christ, that know the word, that are full of the Holy Ghost. We, 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 we forgive the immature actions of the weak that a better thing might be done, that a greater glory might be accomplished. Proverbs 11.25 says, A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Leviticus 19.9 and 10 says, When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. In other words, what he's saying is, when, when, when you when you when you do your, you plant all your stuff, and all the stuff comes up as a, as, a, as a huge harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, don't bring it all in. He said, leave the stuff on the edges for the people that are just coming by. You, you may never see them. You may never meet them. He said, but in the name of Jesus Christ, have a generous spirit. Leave some for somebody else. You got to know today the reason that you're blessed, the reason that you're blessed spiritually so that you can bless others. If you got the deep word of God, if you got the power of the Holy Spirit, if you're walking in spiritual maturity, you know the reason you've been blessed so you can pour into somebody else's life. I don't care who you are. If you're in Christ, you can find somebody that is, that is less mature than you are. I want you to know if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're driving a nice car, if you're living in a nice home, if you're wearing nice clothes, the reason you've been blessed is that you might be a blessing to others. You have not been blessed. I have not been blessed so that people may pat us on our back and say, man, you really got it going on. Devil is a liar. I take no glory. To God be the glory. Because no matter who you are, people are smarter than you, look better than you, worked harder than you, and they don't have what you have. Why? Because you got the favor of God on your life. And so for the moment you say anything like, well, I sure appreciate that, man. No, to God be the glory. 
I've been blessed. So that can be a blessing to others as God tells me to give. Hmm? So are you a faith-based giver? Are you a fact-based giver? We are people of God who, whose giving is directed by faith in God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I say that again. We are children of God whose giving is directed by God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, there you have it. Another uh, blessed word. I hope you find a blessing in that for your life as you look at what God says and how you apply the principles of God to your life and the blessings that have to flow as we walk in God's promises and God's will for our life. I can't, I can't leave tonight without offering you Jesus Christ. Everything that we do, everything uh, that we are about here at the House of Worship is about revealing Christ to you, to the world here. And so I want to offer you Christ. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want you to evaluate your life right now and ask yourself, God forbid, if something were to happen to you and you were to die tonight, can you, can, are you for sure, are you for certain that you're going to spend eternity uh, in heaven with Jesus Christ? The, the, the truth is that there is hell. Hell is real uh, and there is a heaven and that God sent Jesus Christ, God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you and for me, for our sins. That's so all we have to do is accept it. All we have to do is receive it. That's the that's number one thing that a child of God, that a believer has to do, and that is just to simply receive what it is that God has for you. And so simply by opening up your heart, by praying a short prayer and asking Christ to come into your life, to come into your heart, for to, to him to be Lord over your life, you change not only your right now, but you change your destiny, you change your eternity, and you entwine it, you wrap it up with Jesus Christ. So I offer that to you tonight. If you've done that, please let us know because we want to encourage you in that. Uh, let me pray for you tonight. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We declare that you alone are God. You're God all by yourself. You are the great I am. You are the El Shaddai. You are the Adonai. You are our provider. You are our healer. You are our sovereign king. And so tonight, Lord God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ to bless those, to intervene in the lives of those who are watching tonight, whether by internet or whether by television, and simply reveal yourself as God and have your way in their lives. Re remind them that you want to bless them. Remind them that you died on the cross for their abundance, for their prosperity, spiritually first, for spiritual things first, but then that they might have everything that they need. They might have a lack of lack in their lives, Lord God. So just touch what, what needs to be touched, Father. Break what needs to be broken and bless, Father, as only you can. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, we love you, and we are praying for you, and we're hoping that you're praying for us as well. And we look forward to uh, spending some time again with you next week at the same time and same place. Walk in God's grace for your life. And that's our prayer for you in Christ's name. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.